Okay, hello, we're doing increasing and decreasing intervals today, but we're gonna take a quick look at what we have been doing because this unit is almost over. In fact, after today, we only have one more lesson. So we started with what is a function and how do you evaluate a function? So then we could talk about how you can graph a function if you evaluate it at a bunch of different points. So if I plug in a one and a two and a three and a four, I can uh, get points for all of those um, X values that I put in and we can make a graph. And then we talked about function families, which a lot of you guys have to finish today or redo because some of those scores were scary. So if you didn't get the assignment related to this done, you're going to work on that today. So we talked about how to transform the functions. Then we talked about domain, which is what are the values that the function can equal? What x values can the function equal? And then today, we get to learn increasing and decreasing intervals. And that's going to rely a lot on these that we talked about last time. We have to know what interval they're giving us if we can decide if it's increasing or decreasing. But once you do that, once you decide, um, or once you identify, I should say, the interval, the increasing and decreasing is pretty easy from there. So that's where we're going to start here. So we're at the top of page 22. And our first function that we're seeing is an increasing interval. So I'm just highlighting it in a, in a darker color. This function is increasing because as the, well, I don't know. What do you guys think goes in that blank? I should probably pause so the distance learners think that I know what I'm doing. But I don't. Don't worry, I'm on it. Sometimes I think I know what goes in the blanks, and I definitely don't. What? Is my what numbered? No. Good guess, though. The function is increasing because the x values, nope, the y values are getting bigger as you trace the graph from left to right. So now I'll zoom in and tell you what's happening. You start at the left-hand side of the graph, and if I trace this graph, you can see that my finger is moving up. So what they mean is, as, the, as I move left to right, the y is increasing. So here, the y is 0, and then it goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, so on, so forth. So if it looks like it's going up, then it's increasing, which makes sense, obviously. Lots of you guys are probably thinking, well, duh, teacher. But once we start getting graphs like this, it's a little bit harder to tell if your graph is going up or down. So this is the basics. If it looks like this graph is going up, then that means it's increasing. So obviously the second one is what? Decreasing. Because the y values are getting smaller as you go from left to right. So if you start at the leftmost side and you trace the graph, your finger now is moving down. So you always start at the left-hand side, move to the right-hand side. So this guy, this last guy, he's flat. So he's neither increasing nor decreasing. So we say this function is constant. 
constant. And what we mean by that is the y value never changes. This stays at negative 4 no matter what x we plug in. If we move from left to right, the line stays at negative 4. It doesn't ever get higher or lower. So this is constant because the y values are staying the same as you trace from left to right. So these, like I said, are basics, and I'm sure that everybody in here knows that which one's increasing, which one's decreasing, which one is doing neither. So now we make it a little bit more challenging by giving you different kinds of graphs. So the first graph that we see is an absolute value that's been reflected. So he is going two different directions and the directions change where I put that line in. So I'm gonna make that line even more noticeable. So this guy is going two different directions. So from this side, all the way to this blue line, he is increasing. And then from the blue line over, what is he doing? Decreasing. So this side is increasing. This side is decreasing. So now we have to add in the intervals. So we know that if there's an arrow on the left-hand side, that means that it is going to negative infinity for x. Now we have to find out where this blue line is for x, not for y, for x. So I drew the line all the way up to the x-axis. Can you guys see where that's passing through? What is that? Negative 3. So notice we're staying at the x. So negative infinity on the left. We hit the vertex at negative 3. And then now we're going down, or I shouldn't say down. Now we're moving to the right to infinity. So even though he's pointing down, he's pointing down in the right-hand direction. So that means eventually, in terms of x, he's going to hit positive infinity. Because remember, those just go on forever and ever and ever. So now we can write our increasing interval. So this function increases from negative infinity to negative 3. And it doesn't matter if you put a bracket or a parenthesis on these. If you feel better about a parenthesis, then put that. If you feel better about a bracket, put that. It's completely up to you. Then, starting from negative 3, it decreases to infinity. Now, I know that sounds weird because how can we decrease? But remember, these are x values. These are all x values. So the function can be decreasing because that means that y is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So it can be decreasing even though it's going toward positive infinity for the x. Does that make a little bit of sense? Yes, no, maybe? Was that a yes? Okay, so let's talk about, I'm going to say that one more time. So you have two different values going on here, right? We have what the x values are. That's what happens when you move from left to right. 
And then we have what's happening with the Y values. That is whether or not your function is going up or going down. So when you talk about increasing and decreasing intervals, you decide if it's increasing or decreasing based off of what Y is doing. So notice up here we said, well, if Y values are increasing, it's increasing. If Y values are decreasing, that means it's going down and the function is decreasing. And if it's doing neither, it's constant. So notice those are all the Y values, but they tell you that you have to look at these Y values based on what you're going from left to right. These are X values. So as you increase your X values, what are your Y values doing? So in this case, as we increase X, Y is also increasing. And in this case, as we increase X, Y is decreasing. And on this one, as we increase X, it's going neither. So you're increasing or decreasing depends on where you're at on the x moving left to right you decide if it's increasing or decreasing based off if it's going up in that section or down in that section so here when it wants to know where your function increases they want to know what x is doing they've already told you you're increasing so we already know what y is doing we need to tell them what X is doing. So it's just like domain. Over here, X is going all the way from, in, from negative infinity. So from negative infinity to this point, it's going to increase. And from this point, moving to the right, it's going to decrease. So we know what Y is doing, we have to tell them where on X it's doing that. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Okay, domain, we did this last time. If you have a negative infinity here and a positive infinity here, what is it? All real. So you can either do this bracket situation, I mean parentheses, or you can just write out that it's all reals. So we had one turning point for this absolute value, so, and we had two directions. We had an increasing part and a decreasing part. Now this guy, he is different. So first thing that I want to do is highlight where my function turns. So these are the points on the graph where the function changes direction. That's what I mean by turns. These are the points where your function changes direction. So I'm going to um, write those on, I'm going to mark those on my graph with a vertical line. I don't want this color. I want this color. So I'm just darkening where, or highlighting where those turning points are vertically. And now we move on our function from left to right. So I'm gonna cover up the rest of the function for us. You start on the left-hand side and you move right. As you move right, what is your function doing? Increasing. So this is an increasing interval. Okay, now I can forget about that left-hand side and I can cover up the right-hand side and now I just move left to right. So as I go from left to right, what is my function doing? Decreasing. And um, then we have one more section. 
So now we do this far right hand side. I start at the left and I move right. What's your function doing? Increasing. So this graph has three sections. The first one only had two. This one now has three. So let's decide what's happening on X. We have two increasing intervals. The first one goes as far as negative infinity and it will increase all the way to negative two on the x. We know y is increasing, where on x does it do that? So from negative infinity to negative two, comma, because you have one more, what is x on this other turning point? So follow it from the turning point up to the x-axis. What is your x? 2. So that means starting at 2, as you go toward infinity, y is increasing. So increasing from x is negative infinity up to this turning point at 2. And then, sorry, that's negative 2. And then it's increasing again from 2 to infinity. So now we just do our middle one. Here's where you start decreasing at this turning point. So that's negative 2 and it decreases all the way to positive 2. And remember, that's what's happening on the x. We know that y is decreasing. Where on the x is that happening? From negative 2 to 2. Okay, domain. Well, our left-hand side says negative infinity, and our right-hand side says infinity. So what is it? All reals. So even though it looks like those arrows are pointing up and pointing down, as you move out on the graph, they will eventually hit negative infinity or positive infinity. Okay, have you guys ever heard of the of a local max and a local min? Does that sound familiar at all? Okay, so these, you're going to want to note this somewhere. When they're asking about your maximum and your minimum, they are asking about the y values. So up here, these are all x values. In this particular section, they are asking you about y values. So what this means is, how high up on the y will this graph go? Well, I have this arrow that's pointing up. So that means this is going to keep going up to positive infinity on the y. So it's moving up and out. It's moving up and out. And then I have this arrow pointing down, which means the minimum is negative infinity. So then what are these guys? Say again. What? I just didn't hear you. Yeah, well, kind of. So the local max and the local min are the highest and lowest point that you can see. So in between negative infinity and positive infinity, 
you have a max at five. You have a max at negative two comma five. And notice it's the y value that matters. It's this five that matters. So it is the maximum or the minimum. That, okay, I ran out of space as usual, so hopefully I, you didn't miss too much. But what we're talking about now are the zeros on the graph. And these refer to where x, just kidding. These refer to where y is zero. So that means you're looking at the x axis only. You are looking at the x axis and you are writing down where does the graph hit the x-axis where y is zero. So these are called x-intercepts. This is where does the graph pass through or touch zero. So on this one, it looks like that's negative three and a half. Would you agree? You use parentheses when you're listing a point. So these are your x-intercepts, which I know for sure you guys have heard, at least. Okay, then I did the quiz um, in second period, and I missed this one on the quiz because I didn't get this middle point right here. He's passing through also at 0, 0. So he, as he's increasing, he crosses at x is negative 3.5, goes up, turns around, crosses again at 0, 0, goes down, comes back up, and then finally passes through positive 3.5. Are you hanging in? Are you sure? Okay, because that's this is a lot of info. All right, so we got one more, and then maybe we'll do a couple practices on your whiteboard. Only a couple, though. Okay, this guy is a W. Let's see how many turning points he has. He has a turning point here at negative 4. And then he has a turning point up here. And then he has a turning point here. So I have on this guy that you have three turning points, which means that our graph is going to be cut into four sections. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's write down the x values at those turning points. The first one is at negative 4. Where's the next one at? On x. 0. And then where's this one at on x? 4. Okay, so... Remember, this guy is negative infinity. This guy is infinity. Arrows are always positive or negative infinity. Now, get out my paper again. We'll look at it. Okay, this first section, what's he doing? Decreasing. If you move from the arrow over to the right, he's going down. So this first section is decreasing. Okay, now we got this guy. As you move left to right, what's he doing? Increasing. Now we got this guy. Decreasing. And lastly, 
increasing. Okay. So we already have all the numbers we need to list that. Because remember, these are all the x values. So we wrote them up here at the top. This one is increasing. So I'm just going to go look for my i's from negative 4 to 0. And then from positive 4 to infinity. So this first increasing interval starts at negative 4 and goes to 0 on the x. So negative 4 over to 0. Then this one starts at positive 4 and is going toward infinity. Okay, so let's have you get out your whiteboard so that you can do a couple. If you're at home, be getting out your whiteboard too, class. Okay, once you have your whiteboard out, let's have you guys write the first decreasing interval. What is the first decreasing interval? got about 10 5 3 2 okay show me okay you start all the way over here on the left hand side he is decreasing from negative infinity to Four, sorry, negative four. Okay, give me your other one. Yes. Yeah, there's a bin up here. It's got about 20. Ten, five, three, two. Okay, show me. Okay, start on the left hand side. So starting at zero, he decreases until four. Yeah. See how I labeled this with a D? So let me pull out my papers. Where are we at on the X? Starting at zero and going to four, your function is decreasing. Do you see what happened there? Are you sure? Okay, it's a good thing we're going to do more of these. Okay, domain. What's our domain on this guy? All rails. Same as, a, as all the other ones we've looked at so far. Okay, the largest our function can be. So remember, now we're looking at the y-axis. Yes. Piper saying infinity and she is right. How low will this function go? No, no, no. Zero. You have these guys pointing up because it's going to be increasing, but the lowest this W goes is zero on the y axis.
Okay, our local max would be this turning point on the W. It's the center of the W. Zero, five, zero, five. And then our local min is either negative four and zero or four and zero. So much info. Okay, we have one other thing to do before we try a one all on your own. The darn zeros. So remember, when any um, problem ever in math asks you to list the zeros, it's always referring to x-intercepts, always. So we only have two zeros this time. We only have two zeros. We have a, an x-intercept, so it starts decreasing and then hits the x-axis at negative four. He hits the x-axis at negative four, bounces up, turns back around, goes down, and then bounces back up at x is positive four. So he touches the x-axis like a bouncy ball at negative four and positive four. Okay, so the next graph I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna walk you through it one at a time. We'll do two maximum before we do the quiz. I'll have you do two. So you can just do these on your whiteboard and then I will try to make them big enough that you don't have to write anything down. So here is your first one. You can ignore the function at the top if you can even see it. Let's start with domain. Let's start with domain. What is the domain of this function? Okay, all reals, but let's write it on our whiteboard next time, family. Okay, what is your local max? And if you can't see all of the digits, just round or write the first number. What is your local max? What is your local max? You got about 10. Five. Three. Two. Okay, show me. Okay, it's this point right here. 1.7 and 2.1. Okay, local min. What is your local min? Oh, I guess I should change the white. Okay, it's ten. Five. Three. Two. Okay, show me. Good. These. No, this one only. It's not this one because he's, he's passing through. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's just this guy that's your local min, not this guy because he keeps going. But here he turns around. So just this one is your local min. This one keeps going all the way to negative infinity. Do you guys see what happened there? Okay, what are your zeros? What are your zeros? So this is where are we crossing or touching the x-axis? Where are we passing through? Or where are we touching the x-axis? Three, two, 
Can you show me? Good. These two. So now it's those two. Passing through, touching. So passing through, bouncy ball. Okay, how many increasing intervals do you have? You can just write one, two, or three. How many increasing intervals does this function have? How many increasing intervals? About five, three, two, Okay, let's see. Two. How many decreasing intervals does this have? Got about 10. Five. Three. Okay, show me. One. It's just this part right here that's decreasing. Okay, now we're gonna see a crazy graph. How many increasing intervals does this graph have? How many increasing intervals? Ten. Five, three, two, okay, show me, two. How many decreasing intervals? How many decreasing intervals? Ten. Five, three, two, okay, show me, two. So this counts as one, this counts as one. So this whole entire thing is one interval. That counts as one interval. Are we okay on that one now that you see it? Okay, so notice on all of the other ones, the intervals are broken up. Like it decreases, stops, and then turns around. Increases, turns around. So decreases that entire time and then turns around. Does that help a little bit? Okay, last one that I want to do before I let you do the quiz is what are the zeros? So remember, this is where we touch or cross the x-axis. What are our zeros? Roughly 10. Five, three, two, okay, show me. You have three zeros, so you have one here at negative three, you have one here at one, then you have one here at four. Okay, that's it. You guys can do your... 2-4 quiz.